Today is August 2nd, Friday, 2019. Uh, this is Ted Descaris, and this is a train that's uh, poised to go out, outdoors from my underhouse layout here. And it's mostly made up of uh, era, say, 19, mid 1950s, maybe early 60s, uh, uh, rolling stock. <clears throat> and of course, it's a Southern Pacific Black Widow uh, F3A, USA Trains, F3B and F3A, and there's also an Aristocraft uh, RS3 uh, that's uh, in the black, kind of the black livery. It's not really Black Widow, but it's, uh, but it's of that era. Uh, so uh, I thought this, four, these four locos, and uh, a train that is uh, 41 cars long, including the caboose is the 41st car. <coughs> uh, all these uh, engines and rolling stock have center set KD couplers. In the case of the F3s, they have uh, 3D printed cam pack boxes, of which I, Ted Descaris, and Colin Camarillo have developed together. And you take the uh, KD uh, coupler out of the kit, uh, in this case a, a 907 kit, and you put it in our 3D printed coupler box, and they're, they're direct fit coupler boxes. Uh, and we provide the pedestals, and in the case of pilot plugs in, say, the rear of these F3s, or I take that back, not on the F3s, but on the GP units. <clears throat> uh, there'd be pilot plugs <clears throat> to cover that big USA trains uh, open area typically they have. <clears throat> so at any rate, uh, this train again is composed of all, uh, <clears throat> you know, all, all, all cars have KD center set couplers, no offsets. <clears throat> and in some cases, the cars, like with any of the Arista cars, have the lowered floors or have been lowered by other means. <clears throat> To be more realistic, and and that also is behooving to do when you uh, put center set couplers on and get the proper coupler height with with a KD gauge. <clears throat> so uh, so the train is poised to go outdoors, and I shall operate it now. And it's under it's operating under PWM, and the lights benefit is that the lights um, can come on before the engine uh, moves, so that makes it a little more realistic. Um, many locos operate okay that way. In the case of the USA Trains F3s, um, they operate okay that way, and the GP38 does, but the GP30 doesn't seem to. And I think the SD40 is okay, but the SD70 is, uh, doesn't particularly operate okay with the PWM. <laughs> so it was mostly developed uh, you know, for by uh, well originally by Aristocraft, the Revolution, their their latest uh, uh, <coughs> 2.4 gigahertz uh, uh, transmitter frequency uh, and receiver, which is this device over here. And uh, eventually, after Aristocraft went out of business, um, the Revolution, the source of the, the the source supplier of the Revolution, uh, got, you know went into direct business themselves, <clears throat> so they're just known as the revolution now. <clears throat> so that's the controlling system here. So I'll run the train outside. Let's see here. <clears throat> so it's starting to move. So it'll go outdoors that portal back there and over a bridge and you can see the logos go by here's the RS3 that's the Aristocraft RS3 and it has a, a datum precision metal coupler boxes in the in the RS3 and emulating a realistic train uh, the first three cars are stock cars they are they happen to be AML brand and then there are woodside reefers, uh, AML woodside reefers, not to be confused with the earlier era 1890s type reefers offered by I think USA Trains, but these are like mid 1920s and supposedly refurbished uh, maybe in the 30s or 40s. <laughs> so they lasted quite a long time, maybe up into the mid 60s. So here's the rest of the train, most of the box cars. Here's one 50 footer. It's I think the only 50 footer on the train in this example and the rest are uh, mostly 40 foot cars. So we'll go outside and see how it operates. <coughs> So 
So the train is across the bridge here. The first parts, and I'll have to speed it up to pull the grade that's going to go over. It's coming out from under the house here and proceeding to go up the first loop of a two loop. Helix <coughs> in order to gain altitude to go up to the upper part of the yard here. crossing over itself on the first part of the loop. Now it's entering the locos are entering the second part of the loop. So the Locos are equipped with all metal wheels, no traction tires, and uh, they were weighted about an extra pound from what USA Trains had. So they're about in the 8 pound area for the F3s. The RS3 has, has the late Aristo ball bearing motor blocks, so it's about, I think around 9, nine to 10 pounds, about 9.5 pounds to my recollection. So that helps with the traction. And since I'm track powered, I prefer to have uh, you know all the wheels for dedicated for electrical pickup because the uh, traction tired wheels will not not too good for that unless the flanges happen to hit the rail the sides of the rails. So the train can be seen snaking up to the top through the center section. And I better go up there and make sure the turnout is thrown correctly, or else I'll have a derailment of which I wouldn't care for. <laughs> and yes it is, this turnout here is set for the middle path. And I'll set for this, this turnout for the train to come by. Oops. Sounds like there was a derailment over there. <coughs> so how come? Today is August 11th, 2019, uh, Sunday. And uh, it's, it's still before noon, but it's about uh, oh, 78 degrees, or about 78 degrees, I guess, in the sun. <laughs> and this is the train now coming around the tree where formerly the, uh, the three AML stock cars would uh, string line. And I've since added weight to them. And we'll see how they perform. And there are no leanings. These are the reaper cars, AML reaper cars behind it. So it looks like Adding the extra weight, uh, which 
well, there's two things I had done. I added two small weight plates uh, in each in, within the interior, right above the trucks uh, on the stock cars, or within the stock cars. And the plates are called foundation plates, made by Simpson Strong Tie. Yeah. And they're two inches by two inches by about two tenths of an inch thick. And they each weigh about two tenths of a pound. So, so that added four tenths of a pound to each of the um, stock cars, because uh, there's two plates in them, <laughs> one at each end within the interior. And uh, the original factory weight of the car was really too light. It was uh, 2.4 pounds. Mm -hmm. So that brought it up to about 2.8, 2.85 in that area. Mm -hmm. And uh, also the other thing is that the, uh, the uh, trucks, the way they come from the factory, they have a unique uh, spring-loaded mount underneath. Um, and uh, the spring is too soft and the cars would tend to lean over. Uh, well, even before, even when I ran the train last time, when they had st string lined, I had attended to that <clears throat> and stiffened them up by placing washers between the attaching hardware uh, through the truck, that load bared against the truck <laughs> and uh, where it's fastened to the under, under, under carriage of the car or the underbody. <clears throat> And uh, I stiffened it up even a little bit more by adding another small washer. So there's less tendency for them to rock back and forth. So here they are. And they seem to form quite well. And as you can see, they're coming up to the center section of my layout here, which probably adds a little more loading than the outside path against the uh, back fence there. So there you have it success by adding just a little bit more weight to these very lightweight cars. So here's the 41 car train, period oh, 1950s through say mid 60s roughly. Mm. Uh, SP Black Widow USA trains locomotives running on track power and there's also a, a, a RS3 on here, an Aristocraft RS3. So here's the train coming down the grade. And there you have it. So here's the 41 car train with the engines on the opposite end uh, coming down the grade.
Again, the train is 41 cars long.